and start the streaming and I think I think I'm gonna do this in the announcer voice mm -hmm. from Hacksaw so I can just talk like Hacksaw and continue to narrate as things are happening I'm waiting for the Twitch stream to start, and it hasn't started yet, so I'm going to refresh the page, because sometimes you have to do that in order to get the stream to start. And we have audio. All right. I love doing that voice. I'm just like doing that periodically. All right. And <laughs> Dementia Radio now, and recording in three, two, one, and wait. Wildcard subscribed for 46 months in a row. Thank you, Wildcard. And recording in three, two, one. Recorded live on DementiaRadio.org, it's the Funny Music Podcast. Brought to you by TheFunk.com, where you can download new free comedy songs twice a week. Now, here's your hosts, Devo Spice and the great Luke Ski. Hey, Devo Spice. Hey, Luke Ski. We have Art Paul Schlosser in the house. Hey, Art. Here I am. And I'm we have a cowboy hat. And we have Art Paul in a cowboy yeah. hat, which is something I never thought I would see. And we have Dave Goulot. Welcome back, Dave. Hi, Tom. Thanks for having me on again. Thanks for coming on. Dave doesn't have a, a camera, so you just don't have to deal with no, the, I'm, the I'm blank screen. No, I'm cheap and a Luddite. <laughs> <laughs> Totally fine, totally fine. Welcome to episode 740. Oh, I forgot to update the episode number. Let me fix that. It's actually 748. 748 of the Funny Music Podcast for Thursday, October 17th, 2024. The title of this week's episode is Literate Match, which I just put in the chat so you two can refer to it later. And your job is to work that into our conversation somehow. So... Uh, let's do the catch-up thing. Let's get caught up with what Devo and Luke have been up to since last week. Or else, Devo, if Luke failed and didn't show up. Hey, what? Oh, he's <laughs> right. So, Luke, what you been up to? Well, first of all, can you still see me? No, we lost your video. Ah, God damn it. All right. Um, you can still hear me, though, right? Yes, can still hear you. All right, so da, 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 da. <laughs> um, okay, just checking things. Let me go back to the right Zoom thing so y'all can see me. Okay, are you seeing me now? Yes. Yep. Okay, good. So, um, <laughs> I can't hear the so phrase just, "okay, you know, good" without um, thinking of Ross. <laughs> if you're in a drive through so, get me some fries <laughs> i'm not at a drive through i'm actually uh just outside the amc in tustin uh because i am meeting up with my girlfriend kalani so that we can go see uh, uh the uh, the joker sequel which came out two weeks ago that i still hadn't seen yet so um so yeah uh i'm looking forward to seeing that it's i just find it weird that like nobody's talking about this movie like I'm not hearing anyone talk about how good it is. I'm not hearing anybody talk about how bad it is. It's just weird that a sequel to such a highly acclaimed film, one that so many DC incel fanboys loved so much, then like, like zero talk about it at all. So I, I have heard people it, talk it, it about it. And from what I've heard, it's not good, but I haven't seen it. So. Yeah, and the box office is really terrible from what I understand. Yeah, it's not doing well. I guess the, yeah, like, there's a bad word of mouth, apparently. Well, it's like, I know that, you know, obviously Lady Gaga's in it playing some, you know, that universe's version of Harley Quinn, and it's being done as a musical. So I kind of feel like, like, oh, this sounds like something Luke would like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't know about the rest of the country. <laughs> this might be this so, might be one of those it's so bad it's good type of things, you know? You know, maybe. Well, I'm I'm going into it like hoping and assuming that there's going to be things about this that I like. Uh um I all another movie I saw this past week was the movie called Saturday Night, which is, you know, a fictionalization of you know what supposedly went down on the 90 minutes leading up to the first episode of saturday night live airing mm. and you know it being the kind you know it's one of those things where 
I'm sure that some amount of what they're, you know, displaying there actually happened during that time, but it seems more like they're taking a whole lot of tales that had to do with the lead up to the beginning of the show and the first, you know, uh, you know, X number of episodes of the show. I think they're just kind of combining a lot of stories into one plot line. And, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, I, I, I find it a very interesting thing. Um, one thing that's kind of like, I'm trying not to like <laughs> get upset about it or take it personally or whatever, because it's the kind of thing that probably would have, you know, much earlier in my life, but they basically kind of, in like the first six or so episodes of Saturday Night Live, there was a Muppets segment with Jim Henson and Frank Oz and them doing all these creatures like the Gorch and stuff like that. Right. It wasn't like yeah. Kermit land and Piggy Gorch. and Fozzie. Yeah, the land of Gorch. So like, you know, it was all a big experiment and I'm not sure I need, I know there's a YouTube video that goes into more depths about, about that, but you know, it was something that was being tried on this highly experimental show and it ended up, basically not working and flopping. And I primarily blame the two hip for the friggin' room writers of SNL at the time who, ba who, you know, openly hated the fact that there was a Muppets thing happening because Sesame Street had been on the air for like, you know, um, like five or six years at that point and everyone loved Sesame Street. And so they just had this like, they're just looking down their nose at like Jim Henson and like, you know, what the hell is he doing here? You know, not, re not realizing that, you know, within a year or two after that, he was going to create the Muppet show, which would become a worldwide sensation. Yeah. Anyway, if, the point, I don't know if it's true, but Michael O'Donohue, who I think was the first head writer uh, yeah. said, I don't write for felt. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's that, so basically all of that attitude, and especially in, you know, Michael O'Donoghue, like all those things are put in the movie. So it's basically kind of like Jim Henson more or less becomes like a punchline in the whole film, you know, and the actor playing him uh, is doing a great job. But, you know, the other thing that I found interesting was they actually re they actually hired the Jim Henson creature shop to remake a couple of those puppets so that you see them there like in the movie. So I'm just going like, wait, so there's a gorge puppet now. Why don't they use it? Why don't they bring it back? I mean, it's the 50th anniversary season of SNL. It would be like that. Like they should get Brian Henson to show up <laughs> and be on the show this season. Like maybe doing a review of the Saturday night movie or whatever. And, you know, I don't know. This is just ideas in my brain. But anyway, the one thing, other thing I wanted to say about it is that the actor playing, um, um, uh, uh, Chevy Chase, uh, I, I'm forgetting his name now. I think it's Corey Michael Booker, something like that. It's Corey something something. Uh, and he played the Riddler on the Fox uh, TV show Gotham, the kind of prequel series mm -hmm. about you know Jim Gordon and all that. And he played the Riddler, and he was brilliant on that show as the Riddler. And it took me a while to recognize, like, oh, snap, that's the Riddler playing Chevy Chase. But he absolutely nails Chevy Chase, like, and how much of an arrogant piece of crap Chevy Chase was <laughs> and basically still is. Um, so... <laughs> So did you and like also, the movie? Oh, I, I liked it. I don't know if it's a hundred percent accurate to the way things really happened, but I really liked it. Um, and one thing that I think is funny is as I, I didn't look into the, who all was in the cast playing who, but JK Simmons is in it playing Milton Burl. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and, 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 and he just, he's amazing. It's like, it's like, I wish there was a, because he's not quite a supporting actor role. He's kind of a supporting, supporting actor role. And I would love it if, like, somehow he could get, you know, a mini Oscar for that thing. It was it was just friggin' amazing. So, um, yeah. Anyway, um, so that was one thing worth talking about. The rest of the week was basically me working my day job. Uh, I stayed up late last night applying for... I went through all of the tabs on my on my job search list looking for uh, storyboard jobs I could apply for. I found like three, so add that to the one I applied to last week from Warner Brothers and Cartoon Network Studios. So I have four jobs I've applied for that I'm basically operating under the assumption I'm probably not going to get because <laughs> of the way the industry is right now, and there's way too much demand. There's like literal animation legends out there applying for the same jobs I'm applying for. So it just kind of stinks. But um, I've also been working with uh, Kalani's friend, Ella, to help me make a new resume that is just kind of a general resume not aimed at the animation industry so that I could try to find some 
kind of day job because my current day job is pretty much not going to exist beyond December 31st because their company got bought out and sold and the chances of the company continuing beyond that are pretty slim. So, so things are rough and I'm doing my best to just keep my chin up and get through it. And, you know, um, I wish that my song lower decks, keep it moving was getting more attention in the world, you know, with people tweeting it and sharing it and blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. It seems to have been yet again, another song that Luke puts out and, my core fan base like it, but likes it certainly, but the rest of the world has not noticed it, you know, et cetera. So I didn't understand so that's when, it. when I listened to it, I didn't understand it. Have you watched uh, the show? Well, it probably helps. Helps if I w- watch more stars. Yeah. Um, is it Star Trek or? Yeah. Star Trek lower. Yeah. Down. It's Star Trek. Yeah. I so, have to watch more Star Trek. I know they have some of the episodes of that on on YouTube for free that they've posted, so you can watch that on YouTube. Some of the episodes, like I think, some of the first season and the current season. Anyway, um, but yeah, uh, what have you been up to, Devo Spice? Well, last weekend I went to a film festival where they screened uh, two films that I'm in. One is a short film called Consequences, where I play an ex-cop who gets kidnapped by some kid who wants revenge. And this was something we filmed a couple months ago, and it was the most intense acting I've ever had to do. And the final product is really good. And watching it in a room with 100 people, you know, on a big screen and people really getting into it, it was a lot of fun. And the other film I'm in is is a horror film called I Know It's Ben Crane. And this one is doing remarkably well. Like at film festivals, it's it's already won multiple awards, and the the uh, the actor who played the lead role won best actor at a film festival, and like it it seems to have legs. So uh, we're excited for what what this mm. one can do. Um, and then there was another film playing that I wasn't in, but all like all my friends from the acting class were in called Dating Horror Stories, which I really enjoyed. That was a fun one because um, it was exactly what it sounded like. Um, I, I appeared on Steve Goody and Brad Tassel's virtual comedy show on Monday and, uh, was the musical guest, which was a lot of fun. Uh, Brad was flying to Rome at the time. So Carla Ulbrich filled in for him. So that was a fun show. I, last I checked that was not up on their YouTube channel yet, but it should be showing up soon. And we did our first, uh, recording for, Random Acts of Horror, my new my new podcast. Uh, the we did oh, we did cool. the first recording on Tuesday. We've got we've I've already scheduled the re- next recording, which is going to happen next Tuesday. So I I'm, I now have to edit the uh, the episodes. I'm going to release like a teaser episode for free, like first, uh, which is the um just just us selecting the movie that we're going to watch and then we'll be a tune in for episode one where we watch this you know um so that was fun i i did set up a facebook group for random acts of horror so if you're into such a thing and and want to follow the podcast go there i need to set it up on libsyn so that i can actually host it and distribute it and stuff and i was going to do that today and then i ended up having a massive headache and basically got nothing done all day so also, I'm on Blue Sky now, so if you want to look me up, I am Devo Spice on Blue Sky. Not doing a whole lot with it, but I I missed having a place that I could just spout things, uh, you know, little things about, you know, what's going on in my day to day life, and I refuse to go back to Twitter. So, um, and I wanted to show some things that I forgot to do last week when we were going running down Fump Fest. I picked these up uh, from Doctor Don. These are some of his 3D printed characters. We have the uh, the, oh, cool. the, yeah, the the Freddy Krueger and the Jason Voorhees rubber duckies. <laughs> and then, so I picked those up, and then he came running after oh, me and said, "Here, you have to have this too," which is this. You know, basically, it's a ten inch tall Dalek, and uh, oh, wow. this thing is really cool. The, oh. the head turns, you know, around and everything. So this is all Dr. Don's handiwork with his 3D printer. Nice. And I have seen it. And and I have our uh, plaque that we escaped from the secret lab <laughs> with our lives. Hey! So. 
I was going to say since. Toys. Go ahead, Luke. Bump toys. Yeah, no, you, are, you were saying. Toys. <laughs> I would love it if there were bump action figures. I, I, yeah, that would be amazing. Um, so maybe Don can make those for us. Yeah. Uh, but I, I was going to say, you know, uh, now that I mean, we've had, we've had uh, Steve Goody do his parody of C is for Cookie recently maybe you need to do uh, uh another old school sesame street parody uh, rubber dalek Ooh, <laughs> ooh, <laughs> could do that all right art what have you been up and to? and then don can make toys of it yes <laughs> what what have you been up to oh, what have I been up to other than wearing a cowboy hat um i've been um uh, i'm having a variety show here in madison uh, in December, and so I'm trying to get guests to be part of it. Um, and then my artwork, yeah, I've been having art shows. I have uh, paintings that I do, um, and I have some of my fair trade on State Street here, and I'm going to have some at the Goodman Center. Uh, but, you know, you can also see my paintings on Instagram. I've been doing a lot of paintings. I started painting a little bit with glitter. With glitter? Glitter is kind of fun. Interesting. Yeah. It makes the painting more sparkly, but it's hard to take a picture of it because you can't make the the glitter. It, it'd be easier yeah. to film it than to take a picture of it. Yeah. Yeah, you need some really specific lighting like to make the glitter you know, show up in the pictures and, yeah. and, and the in the desired manner. <laughs> yeah. You need some and type of like very candy. specific light source, almost like a literate match. Hey! Well done. Well done. <laughs> hey art, what is the, do you have a date yet for the, uh, for the variety show? Yeah. It's uh, December 6th. If, okay. any, if any fun people are in town, and they, you know, want to do a little bit of the show, they can. Well, unfortunately, I'm I'm still going to be in but California at that time. <laughs> but, you know, if, if someone's coming through town or something, let them yeah. let me know, and I can let them have a little bit of a show. Sure. Uh, well, Steve Good Steve Goody tours a lot. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, I, I'd be love to see Steve Goody live. I love his I love his songs. They're funny. <laughs> I'm sorry, I really no, do like, like his songs. Though. Oh yeah, he's he's great. He's one of the most prolific people we have of the yep. past ten years or so. Yep. Yeah, we love Steve. I want to go down to Tennessee and see him at his open mic or something. Yeah, go down to the Bluebird. <laughs> All right, so Dave, what have you been up to? Not a lot, just uh, just hanging out, uh, doing an occasional weird song or two, sending it up your way if you want, uh, making weird things for the Dangerous Dave stuff, PD Parrot stuff, my own little fantasy world <laughs> of a kid show that never existed, <laughs> only in my mind. <laughs> Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I've got lots of things that only exist in my mind, and right. they should probably stay there. Yes. <laughs> Whatever works. Hey. Yeah. So uh, you posted a song. Yes, give us, I did. Give us a quick intro, and we will give it a listen. Uh, well, it um, it's a parody of um, New Math, the Tom Lehrer song. I know you guys did a whole album of uh, stuff, which is wonderful stuff. Uh, the whole the whole group just really pitching in on those things and i thought i'd go in a little different direction and use some old math in this case roman numerals and this try i tried originally to do the same problem he did the same numbers but uh that didn't fit the meter and i wanted to get all the different numbers the roman numbers in there i think there's seven of them and i forgot about the d that's 500 i forgot all about that one <laughs> so i had to retrofit things and change the numbers again and then try to get the patter down. So it was uh, quite a bit of work, but I think it turned out quite nicely. All right. Here is Roman numerals by Dave Goulot. Consider the following subtraction problem. 1,051 
minus 155 equals 896. Now the book that I got this problem out of wants you to do it in Roman numerals. But don't panic. Roman numerals are just like our numerals, if you're Julius Caesar. It would then read MLI minus CLV. Shall we have a go at it? Hang on. You can't take V from I. I is less than V, so you look at the L in the X place. Now that's really 5X, so you make it 4X regroup, but you can't have 4X right in a row, so you change 4X to read XL, add X to the I to get XI, and you take away V, that's VI. Is that clear? Now, instead of L in the X place, you have XL, because you added 1, that is to say X to the I, but you can't take L from XL, so you look at the M in the C place. Now, that's really 10 C's, so you make it 9 C's regroup, but you can't have 9 C's right in a row, so you change 9 C's to read C, M, add C to XL for C, XL, and you take away L, that's X, C. Got all that? Now, go back to the C place. You got C, M, and you take away C, and that leaves... That's right, D-C-C-C. Aren't they clever? Then why'd they lose their empire? Hooray for Roman numerals. You won't be needing them before your own funerals. They're so ancient, so very ancient, that a child of Caesar's would use them. Come back tomorrow night. We're going to do Sanskrit. I love that you made it just as confusing as as his version, <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> it I, worked. I re checked and double checked and triple checked. Yes, those are the correct numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and this actually got me thinking, like, like what did the Greeks use? Because we always hear about Roman numerals, but I never had any idea what the Greeks used. And I, and I looked it up while the song was playing. Apparently, they just used their letters, where A equals one, B equals two, up mm. through ten. And then the next one was 20, 30, 40, up through 100. Then it was 200, 300, 400, up to 1,000. And then two, three, four thousand, 4,000, up to 9,000. And then they ran out of letters. So apparently they can't count to 10,000. They probably <laughs> didn't, didn't need numbers need, that high yeah, back then. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't need to back then. <laughs> so, so how did you come up with this idea? Uh, it was just... Uh... One of those weird things. I don't know where the, the little lightning bolt hit. I was like, I wonder how this would work using different different styles. And the really tricky bit, other than getting the pattern down, which took a few shots, was just getting all the numbers lined up in the meters. And there was a couple of bits where I had to add a couple extra lines where it's like, you can't have nine Cs right in a row, that, that type of thing. So yeah. I added a couple of lines there. But it explained. I thought it explained it quite well how it how the system worked. Yeah, and uh, and then then having to hear you know Tom's original uh, piano background, we just vamping in the background. That took a, a, quite a few listens <laughs> to get that down too. <laughs> but I think I think I got it pretty close. See, I cheated when I used when I did my version of new math, and I, I found a MIDI file of. Uh, his song and just uh, use that as yeah, the, to, the to play my keyboard and then I rearranged things to fit my verse. Yeah, the so. only the only sheet music I saw was for just the refrain. New math, new hoo hoo math, that part. Mm -hmm. So I had to <laughs> I had to go through note by note and go, no, that's a D sharp. No, that's an F. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> it took a while. <laughs> yeah, it's it's he just it's a it sounds like it's just a lot of ding 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 ding. ding. But if you at least according to the MIDI file I had, it's actually quite, there's a pattern. There, it goes all over the place, like with the notes yeah. and stuff. So yeah, it's much more complicated than I thought it was. He's amazing. Yeah, I mean he's, he's still around, still alive oh, yeah. and kicking too. Yep, wonderful. And the fact that he you know he's playing the this complicated pattern of music and he's just talking and like he's vamping over it you know it's it's amazing work mm. yeah you heard I my really version right yes i have <laughs> cool very, very I, well, I liked it a lot thank you true story very really, true story <laughs> i really liked your song and it reminded me a little bit of haywood banks because on haywood banks <laughs> song oh, yeah he counts the big, the 
he uses Roman numerals for part of the county. Yeah, the the eighteen wheels on a big rig song. That would yeah, that's, that's right. great. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I forgot about that one. Yeah, let's back her up. Eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen. It's a fourteen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've it's it's funny. I taught myself Roman numerals when I was a kid because for some reason I was fascinated by them. And then when we finally got to that lesson when I was in fifth grade, like I got the sh I got the sheet of paper that had Roman numerals on it, and I was like, "Oh, I know this!" and just filled it all out. <laughs> it's like cheating by looking at the my brain. Uh, so so yeah, so th this is not part of your your Petey Parrot project, right? No. Okay. <laughs> No, 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 not not the same thing. By the way, uh, PDP is doing quite well out there in YouTube land. Various uh, various bits that you don't know are going to be accepted, or it's like, oh, they they like that one, really? Okay, whatever. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> yeah, that happens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, this this is a Fump exclusive. Cool. Mm -hmm. We like those. Oh yeah, I like doing them. <laughs> Yeah, I really enjoyed this one. We'll have to, I'll, I'll have to pass it on to Tom and make sure he hears it. <laughs> that would be wild. <laughs> I always wish I could have met the guy, but uh, hey, mm. thing, things happen. Yeah, I uh, I reached out to him via a friend of ours who knows him and asked for a. Uh, Basically asking if he would be, you know, interested in coming out to MarsCon, the event I run the comedy music track at, and I asked him, kind of knowing that he was going to say no, but I just wanted to have asked him so that I could at least <laughs> say to myself, "Well, at least I asked," you know. I talked to Tom Lehrer. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> or I asked, and, or I uh, asked him in a third yes. party or something. <laughs> well, he did contribute that song to the Fump album, right? Did, did yeah, you yeah. How how was he cooperative uh, wise with all that? He must have been well, reasonable. I he, guess he he put all his music in the public domain, and we got that yeah. recording from uh, Jeff Morris. So oh right, yeah. So yeah. Tom really didn't have anything to do with it, but um, yeah, I I may have told this this story before, but the, the only reason I have uh, I've been in contact with Tom was when we put out the compilation album. We had I, I sent an extra copy to Jeff Morris to give to Tom. And then a couple of months later, I got an order for, you know, for somebody buying two more copies of the album. And the address was Thomas Lehrer. And, you know, and I was like, oh, wow, I was like, what? And then I so I, I replied to the email and I'm like, um, wasn't Jeff supposed to give you a copy of this album? And if he didn't <laughs> let me know so I can kick his ass. Um, <laughs> And he said that Jeff did send them the CD, but he wanted additional copies for the archive at Emerson College. So, wow. Yeah. So uh, nice. He bought a couple extra copies. That's so great. That was cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So do you have anything you'd like to plug? Um, nothing really. Just to... Uh... Go to the YouTube and see a bunch of my crap up there. You know, that's all <laughs> the usual stuff, or uh, the the usual places, Spotify and the other stuff. And uh, Dave's last name is G U H L O W for those listening at home. That is correct. Yeah, yes. Yeah, for those of you scoring at home. All right, we're gonna go do some news. I know you said you had to take off. We'll do some news and then we'll talk to Art. So yeah, let's do thanks for having on. me on, guys. Thanks for coming on, dude. Oh no problem. Right. We'll catch hey, you next around. Very funny. Thank you, Art. This is the Fump. on you. Seat 49. I don't think you understood. But the Eagles always brought me joy. But now I play with them just like a doggy play toy. I made it with the bagel and cream cheese cause I was feeling hot. So hot, so hot, so hot. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. Your belly, I kiss your nose. But every freaking night you freaking bite my freaking toes. That's the Funny Music Project at thefump.com.
T-H-E-F-U-M-P dot com. Crack a whip it. Fill up a balloon. Breathe in the gas. That's what I'm doing. Zoink. Good evening. It's the Halloween season. The time to get spooky, await the arrival of the dead, get some candy while trick-or-treating, and dress up in costumes. It's also the time to rock out to some of the spookiest songs ever made, even the funny ones. That is why Wacky Ben of Sunday Funnies is hosting a very special two-hour Halloween podcast special. Wacky Ben's Halloween Treat. No, no, no! Yes, yes, yes. Two hours of some of the funniest and spookiest songs and parodies, and a way of celebrating 20 years of Halloween music since the days of WQ&A. We'll be doing the Monster Mash. The Grim Grinning Ghosts will come out to socialize. Then we bust those ghosts with the Ghostbusters, and throw a zombie apocalypse barbecue. All to make this the most exciting Halloween, until we get to the real scariest day of the year, Election Day. Because Democrat or Republican, they can still make the world a very scary place. Their troubles will now commence. Tune in Monday, October 28th, for Wacky Ben's Halloween Treat on madmusic.com and archive.org. Have a laugh, have a scare, just don't listen alone. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Time for funny music news. Something, something, something. In the news, uh, just so people are aware, last week's episode has not yet gone up in the in the audio feed. The video is up on YouTube, but unfortunately, archive.org is down and has been for a week. They've been suffering from a DDoS attack, so they've managed to get the archive back online in read-only format, but I can't post anything to it, and that's where we host our audio files for this show. So as soon as they get the site back online, uh, we will get the song, the sites posted. And side note, fuck whoever is attacking archive.org. Seriously, that site is a national treasure. Okay. The new Tom Cardi album, The Dance Floor at the End of the Universe, comes out tomorrow. And earlier this evening, just mere hours ago, he posted a new animated music video for a song called HS. And I won't spoil what that stands for. Uh, but check it out on his YouTube channel. And he also had a, uh, an animated video for the first single off the album, which is called Transcendental Cha Cha Cha, which Insane Ian did a reaction video to on his channel. So you can watch that, too. Just a reminder, there is a comedy songs playlist on Spotify that is two and a half hours long. Just search for Halloween comedy songs and you will find it. These are radio-friendly songs, so it's safe to play, like, outside while you're trick-or-treating. There's not going to be anything terribly offensive. And in FunFest yeah. news, the uh, website... I, I updated the website yesterday, but I haven't actually posted it live yet, so those updates will go live shortly. And I wanted to mention yeah. some merchandise uh, that I'm going to... The T-shirts are already active up in the in the the store you can order those i have a limited number of program books i'm going to put those up in the store for people who want them and i have two swag bags left so if anybody wants those email me i'm not going to bother putting them up in the store since i only have two of them left so if you want a fun fest swag bag email me and we'll we'll figure out how to how to pay me all right got anything before tour dates uh, nope all right. Tour dates on Sundays online to sleeps. Mondays online. Steve Goody and Brad Tassel at virtualcomedyshow.com. Mondays and Tuesdays online. Bill Larkin on the 18th in New Orleans, Louisiana, the Consortium of Genius on the 18th in Columbus, Ohio, Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction on the 19th in Fort Wayne, Indiana, Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction on the 23rd in Long Island City, New York, David W. Jacobson on the 24th in Nashville, Tennessee, Steve Goody, Kerplunk and more on the 25th and 26th in Youngstown, Ohio, Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction and on the 26th in Suffern, New York, Carl. Ulbrich. All right, Art, you're up. Hi. Here I am. There you are. You certainly are. Uh, 
Give us a quick intro to this song and we will give it a listen. Okay, I was on State Street. I was bored. And I just started uh, just making up some noise. And I thought it sounded kind of annoying. And then I just started singing, this is not annoying. <laughs> and a few people I played it for started laughing. So I thought, what the heck, I'll send it to the fump, and if they like it, then other people can hear it even more. All right, here is This Is Not Annoying by Art Paul Slosher. This is not annoying. This is not annoying. This is not annoying. This is not annoying. You just think it is. 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 How long is the song? 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 That's a good question. That's a good question. That's a good question. That's a good question. This is not annoying. This is not annoying. This is not annoying. This is not annoying. You just think it is. 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 This is not annoying. This is not annoying. This is not annoying. This is not annoying. You just think it is. 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 How long can you listen? 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 This is not annoying. This is not annoying. This is not annoying. This is not annoying. You just think it is. 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 I got to hand it to you, Art. That song is only a minute and a half long, and yet it seems so much longer somehow. <laughs> I was thinking, what if you create if I have a long playing record of it? Oh, you can make like an eight hour remix of this song and put it up on YouTube and people will watch it. <laughs> just, just loop it for eight hours and people will watch it. <laughs> you should absolutely do that because pe people do stupid stuff like that all the time. Like there's, there's like a 10 hour, um, remix of uh what the hell was that movie with chris rock who played a zebra and there's a there's a oh, uh, uh, madagascar, madagascar two with the whole afro circus yeah thing. yeah he's like that 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 circus that 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 afro circus afro circus afro polka dot polka dot polka dot afro that 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 and it loops infinitely <laughs> for 10 hours <laughs> oh no so I'm picturing this as a as a 10 hour song. You should just just loop it uh, and make it so that it never ends. It, it just like when it gets to the end it it pick, it seamlessly starts over so you can't tell where it ends and where it begins. <laughs> oh maybe sometimes. <laughs> if I had enough technology and knew what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I can help you out. We'll we'll, we'll do this. Give me, give me a video of you performing the song, and I'll I'll loop that too, and we'll just. I, I did post a video. Uh, it's on YouTube, but I also posted the video on the Fump uh, <coughs> uh, Facebook page. Oh, okay. I did, I somehow missed that. I I just displayed some of your artwork, the um, the artwork that you included with the song. I put that up on the screen. I didn't see there was a video. I have to I have to take a look for it. But I'll send it to you by email. Okay. Right after this. Cool. Or sometime soon. So you've performed this one live on State Street and people dig it? Yeah. Yeah, I had a couple uh, people and they were just cracking up. And and uh, one of them usually uh, is very negative about all my music. But when he heard this, he just really laughed. There, there's and something someone, special about this one. If you play something, 
and people just laugh at it. Even if you didn't think it was funny, mm-hmm. you got something. Yeah. Well, when when this song came through the submissions page, um, I think it was after the uh, Fumpcast when we were we we're doing a Fump Fest meeting. Luke was like, "Hey, Devo, there's a Art Paul Slosher song in the de- in the uh, considerations page, and uh, I gave it a perfect score." <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't always, which I don't always do with Art Paul songs, but I'm always just kind of like, you know, waiting for I don't know, just just <laughs> something that clicks. Like, oh, this is peak Art Paul, and yeah. th- and that's what this was. This was yeah. like, like, yep, this is this is this is a winner. This is you know. <laughs> One of my favorites of the year so yeah. far. <laughs> it, it definitely, I, I went and listened to it like right away and I, it made me laugh and I was like, okay, yep, yep, absolutely. I don't remember what, what score I gave it, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm very happy this one got through and we posted it. <laughs> so I was kind of curious, like how, how are things going when it comes to like busking on state street and stuff? Because, you know, back in the days, you know, when people would frequently buy CDs, I know you'd sell your CDs, but in, in today's world, people aren't quite as interested in buying CDs anymore. Uh, so I was just kind of curious, do you like have like a, like a Venmo code people can like, you know, donate money to, or is it just people giving you cash? Like, I'm just curious how, how things are different recently. I haven't gone to Venmo yet. Mm. I'm getting cash. Um, I'm staying under the wire. You know, uh, there's a rule that says if you make less than 12000 you don't have to file taxes. So I'm mm. going to stay under the wire. I don't get as much money, but they just recently gave me a um, – um, I'm a senior almost, and they gave me this a really cheap apartment. It's like a Section 8 apartment. So I don't need as much money. I'm not playing as much. I did. I've been selling paintings more, and um, I get money from streaming. I've gotten a couple. I've gotten a couple checks that were more than twenty dollars. Um, wow, Art's making yeah, that so, nice sandwich money in in uh, Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I get the money probably from you too. I think um, I don't think I've ever I, gotten a check from YouTube. <laughs> well, um, my record, my CDs are on YouTube, and, and when you promote the the picture of the CD through CD Baby, then people go and listen. Then a check um, because of YouTube, YouTube will send money to CD Baby, and um, but it, the videos that I make, I don't get any money for that. But the um, when it's the picture of the CD, that's directly through CD Baby. And when I what I've been doing is I take that picture and I post it on Facebook and Twitter and um, LinkedIn, and people go on stream when they see the picture. Uh, I don't or I. Describe the song a little bit. Um, you know what I did uh, last spring is I posted all my CDs one at a time on uh, Instagram. And I think people streamed them through that. And then now I'm, uh, I'm individually posting just the song on uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and and. Um, um, and the uh, um, uh, LinkedIn, and I think people uh, they read the the description and uh, they'll, they'll listen to the song. And uh, I'm pr- in LinkedIn. I'm getting some probably some business that I wouldn't yeah. be getting elsewhere. And LinkedIn is not as Facebook has got rules that LinkedIn kind of lets you get away with. Cool. But I'm glad it's working for you. Yeah. I, I, I think that's one of the ways I'm getting some money. I might be getting money uh, other other ways, like 
some people on iTunes and on Spotify, but I don't think you get that much money from Spotify. I think it's 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 more for promoting your music. Yeah. What? Uh, because I, you know, I saw that thing by Weird Al. He said that. Thank you, Spotify, <laughs> for all the streaming. I got a whole little bit of money. Well, the the major artists yeah. really kind of got screwed when streaming came along because they were stuck in their old contracts that said that they get like you know five to ten percent of revenue as royalties or whatever. So when you know all the money that comes in through Spotify goes to the record label, and then the record label pays royalties to the artists, which is five to ten percent usually. So it's they kind of got screwed. Which is why a lot of artists are re-recording their music and putting the re-record up on Spotify so that they get all the money themselves for that. Yeah, that's kind of what Taylor Swift did. Yeah, yeah. And a couple of record labels have wised up and specifically put in the contract that you're not allowed to do that. (laughs) (laughs) Because God forbid those executives don't get their fourth yacht. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, all right. So do you have anything you'd like to plug? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to plug, um, uh, let's see. Well, I, I've got a new album coming out soon. It's, um, I'm thinking of calling it Love Songs, but actually we got a title called um, The Art of Love or The Art of Romance. Cool. Because I wrote all the lyrics. But there's like various artists on the album, um, um, and then uh, so you know if you're a CD collector, maybe sometime later you might want to get a copy of that'll be my 56 CD or Jesus. something like that. <laughs> Um, I'd like to point out that I have all of his CDs. I'm pretty sure I'm completely caught up. If not, I'll get caught up when he puts out the new one. Yeah, um, you you have them all. Um, <laughs> you're the only one that has them all. <laughs> yeah, I've. Uh, I, in fact, I was also the person who compiled the first two Best of Art Paul Schlosser CDs uh, way back in the day. And uh, I always intended to make a volume three, but, you know, you've just had so much stuff now that it, it would be hard for me to know where to start with yeah. all that. But um, I did a, uh, I did my own version of live. I did one called. Oh, cool. Uh, it's the, you got it. Uh, it's the best of Art Paul Live. It's called uh, <laughs> Art Paul Live Doing His Best. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, really that good one. that's really and good not necessarily but they are the most favorite of people you know they're so they're kind of the best but yeah this the life quality probably is some are kind of a little bit off or but you know i might want to have that um i i I have a really weird CD that I put out a, a year or two ago called uh, Arc- The Archipola Project. And uh, it's all <laughs> songs done by various artists of my lyrics that they sang a cappella. And huh. it's got the, um, the uh, found footage people, people you know, um, Joe and Nick from found footage. They both do one on there, and then it's got Biff from the Gomers on there. It's a, it's kind of a weird album, uh, but I ultimately I what I would like to promote is that um, I hope uh, people go to my uh, YouTube channel or my band, my band camp is pretty good. ArtPaulSlasher.bandcamp.com. If you want to hear the newest songs. Some of them are not even on CD yet. Uh, it includes uh, uh, one that will be on the, the Love Song album called I'm Dating Your Dog. And, you, know, <laughs> you might like to know <laughs> about I'm Dating Your Dog. Okay. And then it's, <laughs> uh, so I guess um, 
go to my band camp if you uh, want to hear my even if you've already been listening to all my songs on iTunes and on Spotify and you want new material go to my band camp including my uh, my presidential song for uh, Cam- Kamala Harris I wrote a love song to Kamala Harris <laughs> cool yeah so I, I hope you check that out and uh, I would have sent it but I already sent one other song to that's still uh, you're still reviewing and if I were to send uh, the Kamala Harris now it, it would probably not get on the phone until it's too late yeah and I don't know if it's bump quality or not so maybe I'll send you the email of the the video of both uh, the one for this song uh, I, this is not annoying and then I'll send you also the video of Kamala Harris and you can just enjoy it if okay. you want cool. to yeah all right let's do some feedback making the internet absolutely ridiculous Dementia Radio www.dementiaradio.org well, doing the feedback thing which is like the last thing in the episode so I'll be done with this in a minute <laughs> this is the part where there's feedback 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 you know that segment of the show we do about now feedback feedback <laughs> feedback <laughs> Feedback. Hey, log. Oh my God, it's you, not again. Hey, log rope. Glad you guys had a killer fun fest this year. And Luke, if it makes you feel any better, several of your songs have been hits on the Whacked Out 40 a bunch of times. Hell, I still remember Fake Adult being the number one song of 2014. Shame about Fun Fest taking a break, but I can understand. Either way, good luck with bringing it to New Jersey and the East Coast, and thanks for playing Ben's Halloween promo. I'm still happy you guys still appreciate him. And... Thank you. Dizman wrote, I definitely would have done background vocals on a song about Lower Decks had I been asked. Ooh. <laughs> well, you know, I... I don't think we knew like, you were you know, a fan. Two, I mean, there's only like, you know, 200 people involved with the pump now. I couldn't ask everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, that's it for feedback. Let's do some teasing. Because Luke's got to get to a movie. Teasing. He's a teasing kind of guy. Now you have a job. Yeah, yeah. All right. Tomorrow's song is by Joe J. Thomas. And Tuesday's song is by Two Sleeps. And I need a Spotify playlist topic. Any suggestions, guys? Numbers. Numbers. I can do numbers. All right. Okay. I thought literal would be a good thing. In every All, right. Slow <laughs> All right, Dave Gulo is at davegulo.com and davegulo.bandcamp.com, I believe. Art, plug yourself one more time. Oh, I'm at um, um, youtube.com backslash uh, at that, that, that w- wiggly thing at Pink Pants or um, artpaulslasher.bandcamp.com. All right. Have fun. Let's get out of here. Thank you for Thank listening you. to the Funny Music Podcast. I'm Devo Spice. I'm Luke Ski. And look, it's Art Post Yes. <laughs> yeah, Thank you for know. listening to the Funny Music Podcast. You can listen live every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific at DementiaRadio.org. And join us in the chat or subscribe to the podcast feed. Look us up on iTunes and be sure to leave us a review. Feedback for the show can be sent to info at thefump.com. The Funny Music Podcast is a production of Fidem Interactive, LLC, released under a Creative Commons share-alike license. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Shout it to random people on the street. And be sure to visit thefump.com for the latest funny songs. Tune in next week where you'll hear Luke Ski say, Luke left. I'm all alone.